As I mentioned in the previous video, most of the clouds and weather occurs in the troposphere. The reason for this is the fact that the troposphere decreases in temperature as altitude increases. Solar radiation in the form of heat warms the surface of the planet. The warm ground then heats the air above it. Warm air is less dense than cool air and therefore rises, bringing with it water molecules. As the warm air rises, it cools and the water condenses into clouds. Eventually, the air cools so much that it starts to get heavy and then sinks back down to the surface of the Earth to be heated again. This cycle is called atmospheric circulation. Atmospheric circulation leads to wind as well as precipitation, and all of this is what we call weather. The circulation of the atmosphere also has global effects. The rising and cooling of air causes the production of trade winds that blow east to west, and westerlies that blow west to east. The rotation of the Earth also influences winds. As the Earth rotates east to west, it deflects wind from its straight line path. Air and fluids turn right in the northern hemisphere and turn left in the southern hemisphere. This phenomenon is called the Coriolis effect. The trade winds and westerlies also produce ocean currents. In the North Atlantic, for example, the prevailing winds create a clockwise circular in what is known as the North Atlantic gyre. Along with the many different wind-impacted currents throughout the world's oceans, temperature also impacts the movement of ocean water. Ocean water varies in density, with warm water sitting near the surface and cold, more dense water below. These currents of warm and cold water help to transport nutrients up from the deep ocean and have important impacts on global climate. Atmospheric and ocean currents can interact in interesting and ecologically important ways. For example, when cool water from deep in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of South America meets warm, strong, west-blowing trade winds from across the continent, it causes what is called upwelling, where the cool seawater, which is rich in nutrients from the deep ocean, warms quickly and moves up towards the surface, bringing those nutrients up to where microorganisms like algae can use it. This leads to an explosion of algae and other microorganisms, which then produces an explosion of fish populations. This upwelling is extremely important ecologically as well as economically for local fisheries. However, every two to seven years, the atmospheric circulation reverses. The trade winds weaken and the ocean warms, blocking this upwelling. This shift is called El Nino. In El Nino years, not only does this upwelling stop, but it brings heavy rains to North America and droughts to Southeast Asia.